In this video, we'll talk about using Melodyne Essentials, which is integrated into Mixcraft 8 Pro Studio. Now, be aware that it's only in Pro Studio. If you're using Mixcraft 8 Recording Studio, you'll want to upgrade. For those of you not familiar with Melodyne, basically it's software that lets you easily and precisely edit the tuning and timing of audio. You can use it on any mono, single note at a time source audio, but most frequently you'd use it to fix and modify tuning and timing of vocal performances. Where it differs from tuning plugins like G-Snap, Pitch Correction, or in Cherry's Auto-Tune is that these correct pitch in real time as audio is playing back through them. But with Melodyne, audio is loaded in and analyzed prior to playback. And unlike the plugin versions of Melodyne that you can buy, Mixcraft loads and analyzes the audio quickly and automatically. And Melodyne does its best to figure out what each individual note is and breaks them up into these individual note blobs. As you may have noticed, Melodyne's note blobs on a grid look pretty similar to Mixcraft's MIDI note piano roll editor, and it works pretty much the same. Each blob represents a note, and these can be moved up and down on the grid, or they can be moved to the right and left to adjust timing. Melodyne lets you do other tricks as well, including quantizing these notes to precise pitches. It also lets you correct timing, make notes longer and shorter, or even make copies of performances with different notes to create harmonies. So here I'm going to show you how to use Melodyne to take a vocal track over here, and really clean up the pitch on this. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that the entire performance is one clip. Uh, typically you might end up with a bunch of clips. Here I've got three of them, but you know it could be a lot more depending on how you recorded it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just drag over here and highlight all three of these. And you can right click on any of them. And I'm going to merge. It creates one big clip. If I go all the way to the end, you can see it's one continuous clip. And now I can double click on this and it opens up in the standard editor, which you can see right there. This is the standard waveform editor. And I can play it like normal. So now we're going to go into the Melodyne functionality, which is this button right here. So here we can select between the regular editor view or Melodyne. And if I click on Melodyne, here's Melodyne. And you'll see this is all just one waveform, but see where it says monophonic detection? Okay, it just figured out everything while we were waiting, which is pretty quick for that <laughs> giant two and a half minute audio file. And here are all those note blobs we were talking about earlier. I can take the little magnifying glass, I can slide out here to move them out a little bit, or I can go up and down to zoom in and out. And over here are our tools. We've got the main tool, which is called, appropriately enough, the main tool. Uh, it does most of our functions, and you can see it changes the cursor depending on where I am. This will change your uh, movements of the notes. Uh, it'll change it up and down, that very pleasant sound. In the middle here we have this hand, which just simply grabs the whole thing and moves it around, up, down, whatever. In addition to navigating with the little hand tool over here, there's also these little sliders down here, and you can move these to go left and right, and obviously over here you can go up and down. And you can also adjust the size of the blobs with this guy right here, although I usually leave it on full tilt. You also might notice that I don't have any of the tab information over here, and that's because I've clicked this over here. This is usually Mixcraft's default view, and if you want to make some more space for yourself, you can click there and it'll hide those tabs over there when you're using Melodyne. One other thing to be uh, peripherally aware of is that you've got these mode selectors right here. We're going to just stay in clip mode right now, and this is where we're going to do everything. Before we go any further, one thing I want to mention is that uh, you may need to resize the top window versus the bottom window. As you can see, we have very little room up here right now, but that's because I've got my screen resolution relatively small at 1280 by 720, and that's just so it'll fit in the video format nicely. But typically, you'd probably have a bigger screen space than this, so you'll have more space up here. But uh, regardless, you can move the mouse right here anywhere across the uh, horizontal plane. <laughs> and when it turns in those two lines, you can move it up and down. Now, again, I'm not getting much space because of my whole window size, but if your window size is bigger, you can move it up and down quite a bit. And you probably do want to make this window pretty big up and down, so you'll have a fair amount of leeway going up and down. So with that said, let's take a listen to the track, which is a song I did. It's me singing, so be sure and be really nasty in the YouTube comments <laughs> uh, when I play this. Waiting here on the sidelines Waiting for it all to come down So that's not really super wildly out of tune, but it certainly could use a little bit of help. So I'm going to go here, and each one of these note blobs you can see is sitting on the grid. And if you look at the grid, you can see the gray and white 
horizontal lines, and these actually represent a uh, piano keyboard. So if you look, like, this would be C, C sharp, D, D sharp, then you'd have your two white keys of E and F, F sharp, so forth. Right now we haven't really corrected anything, so you can see that, like, these blobs aren't really sitting exactly on the lines. Like, for example, this one right here, let me zoom in on that guy a little bit, I'm flat. This should be a B flat, but I'm a little flat. And here I'm a little sharp and so forth. And you can listen to the track soloed without any of the music up here going uh, just by clicking somewhere in here on the grid or up here on the timeline. On the sidelines. And if you grab one, as you can hear it, it sounds I... continuously, which can drive people nuts, but it really lets you hear where the pitch is. Now you could just move every note up and down on the grid, and that would be a somewhat time consuming way of tuning things. But the much better way to do it is to use this button here, which is called Correct Pitch Macro. And that lets you do a whole bunch of notes, or all of the notes, in one fell swoop, which is awesome. So let me take my zoom tool here, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see more of the notes. Now, if you don't select any notes or groups of notes, the pitch macro will affect everything simultaneously, which is often what you want to do. So I don't have anything selected here, and I'm going to hit this button, and see where it says Pitch Center right here. This will affect how much everything gets pulled back to the notes that you're trying to quantize to. In other words, snapping to a scale. And as I move this, you can see these all move. Now below this, we have a pitch drift slider. And this is a little different. What this does is, say you were holding an O and you went, uh, and you slightly went off pitch as you held the note. The pitch drift slider affects how much it lets things drift in and out, for lack of a better way of putting it. In other words, once it's figured out what the center note is, you can see there's a lot of vibrato on this guy, uh, it sort of pulls these in and just generally affects how much a note can move around once you're holding it. I usually go somewhere around you know, 70 to 80%. Uh, what's really neat about Melodyne is you can take this pitch center control and crank it way up. And unlike a lot of tuning programs, it still maintains all the nuances in the notes. So you don't end up with that T-Pain, Cher, modern pop music, stair-steppy, robotic sound. Um, that is doable, but you have to do some other things to make that happen. So you can really set things pretty extreme in Melodyne, and all it will do is just make you sound like you were singing really well, and you won't hear obvious artifacts. One other thing I want to point out before I hit the OK button is, see where it says Snap C Major? The reason why this is here is because Melodyne has smartly determined that it thinks I'm singing in the key of C major. And in this case, it's almost right, but there's notes that aren't in C major. So if you don't check this box, then it's just going to tune to half steps, which is fine with me. So right now I'm going to hit OK. And now when we listen to this... Waiting here on the sidelines Waiting for it all to come down so all my faux rock star nuance is still there, but uh, I'm much more in tune. Now, as a comparison, we can hit this little button right here that looks like a paint roller, but it's actually a little arrow going around. Uh, that is a compare button, obviously, and when we hit this, see everything just jumped back to where it was? Turns gray and jumps back to where it was. So we can actually listen to it in A-B air performances. So here's without. Waiting here on the sidelines Waiting for it all to come down and here's with Melodyne Quad. Waiting here on the sidelines. Waiting for it all to come down. So as you can hear, I just got about 50% more competent as a vocalist. <laughs> now, if you don't want everything to be tuned or you want to undo it for some reason, you've got a fair amount of options for that. You can always just uh, hit undo if you do a big, massive, sweeping change of a bunch of notes. But you can also go to individual notes and highlight them and right-click. See where it says Reset Individual Edits? reset all pitch changes, reset pitch center, so forth. So you can pretty much undo everything, um, and you can do it on a per note basis. You can also correct pitch on a per note basis. So for example, I'm going to undo these, reset all pitch changes, and you see they snap back to where they were. And let's say I just highlight a couple of these. Uh, I can go back into my pitch macro here, and center, you see they fly into place. And so this way you can work on individual notes. Most of the time doing one of those sweeping everything at once edits will work, but sometimes Melodyne will get fooled and it bends something the wrong way so then it will go the wrong direction. In that case, usually the best thing to do is to highlight the note, 
hold down the alt key and yeah. move it up and down. And then you can just listen to it and make sure it's doing what you want. Sidelines. Line. Sidelines. You can hear that note sharp. Line. And as I move it down, I can hear it get into place. On the sidelines. Now, of course, there's a lot of other things we can do, including altering the timing and amount of vibrato and all sorts of things like that. But for now, uh, this should get you going just doing basic tuning. And finally, one more little thing before we go. Um, there's this button right here that says Remove Melodyne, and it does exactly what you think. It completely takes Melodyne out of the equation, puts you back to your original sound, and everything's gone. If you decide you didn't want to initialize Melodyne, or you hit the button by accident, you can always undo it like any other function in Mixcraft by hitting Control and the Z key. And when you're done with your edits, you can just close it like any other edit window, clicking right there, and you'll have your Melodyne vocal.